He is risen indeed. Good morning, saints. And welcome to worship on this, the second Sunday in the Easter season, in which we are going to be assured from God's word this morning that indeed, we have a Savior who has been raised from the dead. You'll find the order of worship either in your worship folder or it's up for you on the screens as well. Let us begin the worship of our resurrected Savior this morning with the singing of our first hymn, Awake My Heart with Gladness.
please rise. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Why look for the living among the dead? The Son of Man was crucified, but on the third day he rose from the dead. Our glorious Redeemer King lives triumphantly. We give honor and praise to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings as we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done that which you command. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins. Have mercy on us because of the perfect obedience and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive us all that is in the past, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, move us to serve you faithfully. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has been raised from the dead and lives eternally. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the assurance that Jesus' blood has cleansed us from all sins, we give thanks to and praise to our risen, to our risen Lord. He is risen indeed. And our song of thanks and praise to our risen Lord this morning will be sung by our Reflections Choir. You may be seated.
The Lord be with you. We pray. Arisen Lord, you came to your disciples and took away their fears with your word of peace. Come to us also by word and sacrament and banish our fears with the comforting assurance of your abiding presence. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 2. And here we see Peter and the other disciples boldly and confidently publicly proclaiming this fact that God has raised this Jesus to life. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, you will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried. And his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet. And he knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne seeing what was to come. He spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. The word of the Lord. Our handbell choir will play their anthem. Alleluia, Christ is risen.
Our second reading is taken from Peter's first letter in chapter 1. Peter and I witness to the Lord's resurrection. Reminds what God in his great mercy has done through Jesus' resurrection. And that has given us a living hope. It's given us a new birth. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, You love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet have believed. Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel of our Lord. The Gospel according to John chapter 20. And here is John's account of what took place on that first day of the week and the week that followed. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated as we sing the first seven stanzas of our next hymn, O Sons and Daughters of the King.
God's richest grace and blessing and peace are poured out on you each and every day. Because you have a Savior who is not dead but is alive, Jesus Christ our Lord. And we hear our Lord's word this morning in Acts chapter 2 where Peter and the other disciples replied this. God has raised this Jesus to life. We are witnesses of this fact. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ. What a difference a couple of months make. Weeks ago, Peter was by a fire trying to warm himself, but he was so afraid and terrified that he wouldn't even speak of Jesus to a servant girl. Weeks ago, you know that the disciples, they were hiding behind locked doors because they were terrified that the Jews would do the same thing that they had done to Jesus. Weeks ago, the disciples were filled with fear and dread. Weeks ago, even one of the disciples, Thomas, he boldly and proclaimed that he would never ever believe that Jesus was alive. He believed that Jesus was dead and gone. Weeks ago, doubt consumed the disciples. Only 50 days had passed since these actions and now what do we find? We find now Peter and the other disciples boldly standing before those whom only weeks earlier they were hiding from behind locked doors. We find Peter and the other disciples even doubting Thomas full of confidence. What led to this drastic and dramatic change when going from hiding in fearful silence to boldly shouting in public? Three words. He is risen. He is risen. God has raised this Jesus to life. If there are any doubts among us today about who the true God is and what he has done and where we are going, Let them all be alleviated today. For this is the truth. God has raised Jesus to life. There are two things that we have been told that we can be absolutely sure of in this life. One of them is death. None of us are there quite yet. And then the other thing that we can also be sure of is going to take place on April 18th. Taxes. Well, you know what we're going to do today? Today, we're going to add a third thing that we can be absolutely sure of. And you want to know that third thing that we can be absolutely sure of? God has raised Jesus to life. We can be absolutely sure of Jesus' resurrection. For the women going to the tomb on that early Easter morning and finding it empty, that was a sure thing. And Peter and John 
racing to the tomb and looking inside and finding it empty was a sure thing. And Mary, there in the garden, seeing Jesus, was a sure thing. And Jesus appearing to his disciples saying, Peace be with you, was a sure thing. And then appearing to Thomas a week later saying, Thomas, put your finger right here. Reach out your hand and, and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe was a sure thing. Today, hear these words loud and clear from Peter and the 11 disciples who were witness to God raising Jesus from the dead. Listen to this. And when we listen, we are going to hear about how impossible it was for death to keep a hold on Jesus. How impossible it was for, for, for death to contain Jesus in the tomb. And the witnesses that we have to this give us this picture of kind of like a, a woman in, in labor pains. Now, for you ladies, you know, who've gone through those labor pains giving birth, you know that when those labor pains come, uh, guess what? No matter how much you try to stop that child from coming, it's going to come whether you want it to or not. And that's the picture here that the disciples kind of describe with Jesus' resurrection that no matter how hard death tried to contain Jesus in that tomb, there was no stopping Jesus' resurrection. Death could not stop Jesus from exiting that tomb. It was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Jesus rising from the dead was a sure thing. And why shouldn't it be? For Jesus himself predicted his resurrection. Did you hear how he already did that today, this morning in his word? That's right, your Savior spoke to you even before he took on flesh, telling you that he was going to rise from the dead. You want to know how he did that? He did it through the mouth of mighty King David. Where it's recorded for us in Psalm 16 in these words. This is the Savior speaking through David. I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. So I want you to take a good, hard look at those words. And now, let's go back to some of the things that took place a week ago Thursday and a week ago Friday. We see one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, betray Jesus with a kiss. Now take a look at these words and think, and what would apply there? Here, one of Jesus' own disciples had betrayed him with a kiss. And you know what Jesus says? I will not be shaken. Jesus wasn't shaken by that. Even as he was handed over to wicked men, he saw the Lord before him. Even as Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know what he said those words with? He said it in hope. Even as Jesus suffered all that he did on Good Friday, there was still gladness and joy in his heart and rejoicing on his tongue because he knew he knew what about Easter? that it was a sure thing 
He knew that his body would not be abandoned to, his, to the grave. He knew that death could not contain him in the grave. He knew that his body would not experience the decay that death brings. God raising Jesus from the dead was a sure thing. It was foretold by Jesus himself. And you know what? We know who Jesus is. For listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. You yourselves know the miracles Jesus did. Think about Lazarus. Jesus telling, you know, people to take off Lazarus' grave clothes and let him go. You know your Savior walked on water. Think about how many of the accounts talk about Jesus controlling the weather. Or all of those times that that we hear, you know, Jesus, he, he cured people of all of these illness and ailments that afflicted people. You know about that, that strange darkness and earthquake that, that happened following Jesus' death and the tombs of, 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 of many people, believers in Christ, broke open and they, they came back to, to life. All of these miracles and signs and wonders proved, showed publicly one thing. Jesus is the promised hero, the Messiah, who was sent by God to deliver all from all of their sin. With all of these witnesses, what more proof do you need to know that Jesus is God, that he is your Savior, whom God raised from the dead. What more proof do you need? Tell me, what more proof do you need? I've got all day. How much more proof do you need? What more proof would you like to have? That God has raised Jesus to life. Come on, let's hear it. Anyone? Like I said, I, I can be here till five tonight. Or six, if you want. Okay, I don't hear anything. That must mean you know this. God has raised this Jesus to life. So saints, I can speak to you confidently about this. God has raised this Jesus to life. We are witnesses of this. You have the testimony of the disciples. Who were there? For Pete's sake. If Thomas, who said he would never, ever believe, he believes that Jesus has been raised from the dead, well, then you know what? Maybe there's hope for all of us, too. Plus, you have the Savior himself. You have the words of your Savior himself when he said this, you will not let your Holy One see decay. What more do you need? God has raised this Jesus to life. And since God has raised this Jesus to life, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go back to these words from Psalm 16. And why they certainly, first and foremost, apply to our Savior we can now apply these words to ourselves. So you know what? The Lord will always be before you. He will always protect you and be watching out for you. And even though this earth shakes, rattles, and rolls and throws all of us for loops, we will not be shaken. I am a child of God and heir of heaven. And since God has raised this Jesus to life, you know what your heart is?
your heart is glad. And what does your tongue do? Well, it's been rejoicing. It's been rejoicing so much that what did we all shout on, on Easter Sunday? Hallelujah! My Savior is alive. My sins then are really forgiven. And then I really do have life. He is risen indeed. And since God has raised this Jesus to life, what about this? Uh, what about your flesh? My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave. We have this sure and certain hope that when we are six feet under, we will rise up, shake off our dust, open up our eyes, and we will see the Lord with our own eyes. Or do you have doubts about that? Well, then I'm going to ask, what more proof do you need? Since God has raised this Jesus to life, we have been made known the paths of life. And our path to life is not paved with our works. It's paved with the cornerstone of our Savior's work and righteousness. And our sins are not forgiven by wishing them away or trying to make up for them, but in the blood of our Savior. Where's the proof? God has raised this Jesus to life. God has raised Jesus to life. The disciples were witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. They saw Jesus with their own eyes. And these disciples, you know what they did? They wrote down what they saw and heard so that we might know that Jesus is the Christ and that by believing we may have life in his name. And today, we are the ones who are witnesses to Christ's resurrection. We know what happened one week ago. We know that no one came and took Jesus' body. Jesus is alive because death could not keep its hold on Jesus. So stand up with your fellow saints. Raise your voice. Speak loudly. Speak clearly. Speak confidently this truth that is most certainly true. God has raised Jesus to life. We are all witnesses of that fact. Amen. Please rise. May that peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the one who has indeed been raised from the dead and given you a life of new hope. Jesus Christ, our Lord. For our confession of faith this morning, we'll join together in singing a hymn. Alleluia, Jesus lives. Please remain standing.
You may be seated as the offerings of God's people are brought forward. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have made known to us the path of life. You have made our joy complete. Give us your gift of peace and drive all doubt from our hearts with the gospel of your resurrection, that we may face all troubles with boldness and confidence. Have mercy on those who live in doubt, who live without hope, and even those who oppose your gospel. In your grace, prepare their hearts and give them opportunities to hear your gospel again. Strengthen and keep those who proclaim your word in your grace that they may boldly proclaim the gospel they have heard and bring many more into fellowship with you and your church. Risen Lord, with you there is no doubt, but the worries and cares of the world and the burdens in our hearts weigh us down. Lighten the burdens of those who struggle, that they may never doubt your word or your goodness, but find their life and light in you. And to that end, Lord, be with the Reinbold family, who just buried their six-year-old daughter on Tuesday. Lighten their burdens. Lead them never to doubt your word or your goodness, but may they always believe in this truth, this fact, that indeed you have raised your son Jesus from the dead. We also ask, Lord, that you would continue to be with your servant of almost a hundred years, Marge Rudder, who is now uh, suffering with an illness. Lord, continue to lead her to see that you are her life and light. And let not the worries and cares of this world and what she is going through right now ever dampen her love for you. Lord Jesus Christ, true God and truly human, you do not change and you are holy in all your works. Remove all our unbelief and doubt and fill our hearts with the gifts of your grace that we may believe and know you as our Lord and our God. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in the final two stanzas of O Sons and Daughters of the King.
A very good morning to you, saints of God. There are a couple of announcements. First of all, I have been asked to announce that on April 30th, so that's a, a week from Sunday, the next Sunday, April 30th, Salty Earth Productions will be showing another one of their movies here at church. That event starts at 3 o'clock. The doors will open and the movie will be shown around from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., so that's April 30th. Then also, there was a call meeting this past Wednesday here at Mount Calvary, both for third and seventh grade, the, the vacancies that we have. It was decided not to extend calls with the call list that we had, so we did not issue any calls on Wednesday. Instead, what's going to happen is that uh, I'm going to be teaching third and seventh grade next year. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, instead, what's going to happen is the school board is going to be uh, taking a look then at our options, and there, there are still uh, options available for us, and one will more than likely be going to uh, our, our College of Education, Martin Luther College, and uh, requesting a candidate, and we also have some other options as well. So you can be on the lookout for how we will fill those vacancies next year in our school. God's blessings to you, saints of God. Rejoice in the fact that you are witnesses to our Savior's resurrection and continue to proclaim that wonderful truth. Have a wonderful week.